Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going over this, this thing right here, the for loop. Now I'm not going to go over this example, I don't really like this example, I don't think it's a very good, um, I don't think it really shows what the uh, for loop is, is all about really. I think it's a bit too complicated and just a bit too, you know, unnecessary. So I'm just going to be doing my own little tutorial on for loops. So right here we're going to focus on this for loop here and I'm just going to show you how to use a for loop and what it does and what you can use it for. So here it goes. So the for loop, obviously it's a for and then it has this whole specific structure. So you have to say for a variable that's an integer. In this case they've just decided to call their integer just any, any random integer. But you can use a variable. So what I usually like to do is would be like say oh, we'll call a variable hello or oops sorry we'll say int hello equals zero and then I'll say for hello right then you can say or you could say you could switch this pin with hello Hello. So you could say for hello equals to zero. So that means basically it will only for. So you have this this structure here, and you need for with the um, uh, what you call it thingy, parentheses with the parentheses at the end, and then a variable that's an integer equals to zero. That means it will only do the for loop when that variable happens to be equal to that specific number. So in this case, the variable is hello, and that specific number is zero. So it will only do the rest of this stuff when the variable, which is an integer called hello, hello. It will only do it when it's equal to zero. There we go. So it will only do the for loop when it's equal to zero. If hello, if I said hello equal to, to three, it would completely it ignore the for loop because hello is not zero. So that's that's useful to know. And it says hello is less than eight. Basically what the for loop's gonna do is gonna create a loop, right? And the loop is gonna be inside these two things right here. Right? This thing and this thing. Okay? And it'll it'll repeat the th the code inside that, those two brackets, like one less time than this number you have here. So for hello, hello is less than eight, meaning it'll go through this loop once. Okay, and hello plus plus. That means hello is gonna get greater every time. So that means that it's gonna go through this this code which happens to be in the middle of this and this. It's gonna do that once. Then at the once it's done that code, for example, pin mode, make this pin an output, you could make turn an LED on or something. So once all that code inside these brackets is finished. It's then going to set hello equal to 1, do the code again, set hello equal to 2, do the code again, set hello equal to 3, do the code again, code again, set hello equal to 4, do the code again, well, well, all the way up till it gets to 7. And then it comes, it, once it's done it 6 times, it's going to set hello equal to 7, do this again, and then say, well, I can't set it equal to 8, right? Because hello must be less than 8. So we're just going to exit. We're just going to leave the for loop. The for loop's going to stop happening, and whatever code is next is going to start happening. Now, you could always have it that hello must be greater than eight. So hello minus minus, and that means hello is going to count downwards. So that means that you could say when hello equals to 100 and set hello starting equal to 100 or have some other code only set hello equal to 100 when a certain servo was doing this or something like that, I don't care. So for once, once hello is equal to 100, hello is going to be um, is going to count down from 100 and it's got to be greater than 8 so once it gets to 8 it no longer satisfies that requirement of being 8 so that means it would go through this whole loop 92 times once it's gone through this whole loop 92 times right whatever's inside meaning the, the whole loop so whatever's between these two things means the whole loop once ever it's done that thing 92 times it's gonna say well hello is no longer greater than 8 because hello is 8 so we're just gonna exit the for loop now, the way I usually use for loops is if I want to do something a certain number of times and I want it to do it 
consecutively. So if I want to turn an LED on and then off eight times, I can say four hello equals to zero and just have hello start off as zero. You could say hello is going to be less than, say I want to blink the LED 10 times, or I would say 11, because I want to be at less than 11, which is 10. And we're going to say hello plus plus, it means it's going to get greater. So it's going to go through this whole code, whatever here, I could say, you know, uh, LED, which I could set equal to some LED, uh, digital right, I could say digital right. LED equal to high. I'm pretty sure that's how you do digital right. I might forget. I don't know. Anyway, then it would, then I could say, you know, delay. Eh. 100. And then digital right, the LED low. Then it'll do that code, then it'll set hello equal to one, do it again, set hello equal to two, do it again and stuff. And that's another way you can get an LED to blink is by doing that. But it'll only blink a specific number of times. Because once it gets to 10, it's going to say, well, you know, if we put hello to one more, it'll be 11. And 11 doesn't satisfy the requirement of being less than 11 because 11 is 11. So it's just going to exit. Also, if you want to get out of a for loop in the middle, as in say hello is equal to six, you can say if hello is equal to six, you could do something called break. That means that once hello equals six, get out of the for loop. So this is our for loop. It's gonna do whatever code is right here, like delay for one or something, right? So, so the break function can be used to exit a for loop. So sometimes, like in uh, some projects, I've used it to, to do to make the hello value increment up and only once a certain sensor or something. So the hello, hello value is incrementing up and doing this code every time. It could be pulling some button or pulling some sensor or something. And, uh, or, and this uh, variable of hello itself can also be used. So you can say hello digital right uh, pin. You could set hello equal to the pin number and then the LED pin, then the LED would be on the next pin or the the la the the pin downwards from it each time next pin if it was plus plus the pin downwards if it was minus minus so then um you know you can also so you can use the value hello itself to do stuff in your program like that or you could say hello equal to the delay in something you could say delay hello You could serially print hello. Uh, it could be something. You can also, if you say something like, you know, um, you, you know, you could do some code and stuff in here. You can really do anything you want. And so I, I've done it that uh, it'll it'll go through every time using the value hello to do something right to send to the computer via serial, and then only once a specific sensor was a certain function. I could say if you know, sensor or whatever uh, is reading something, then break out of the code and go into another section of the code. So this essentially lets you do something. Say I wanted to do to uh, check a button a maximum of 100 times uh, every, or a maximum of 10,000 times every 10 milliseconds. I could delay 10 milliseconds, check the button, and I could say if button is equal to high, then break, and it'll break the code. And if the button isn't pressed within a certain time, it'll exit anyways, just like if you had done the break. So, you know, you could put the code here. You could say, you know, also before, if you have your if, right, say your value hello. If hello, you want to break, right? Now, if you want to, if you want to make it do something different, if it's timed out, as in if it's, if the value hello is exceeded the 11 or whatever number you have, you can make do something different by having in here before where you want to break it, right? The line before where you want to break it, you can say some random value like some random, I don't know. You can make some random integer and you could set it equal to, you could set some integer equal to one and you could set some integer here 
equal to zero that way and then you could have a code here that could say if some integer equals to one do this if some integer equals to zero do this because you know that if it timed out it would never set some integer equal to one so it's zero so you know it must have timed out it could, and now you know if it's set some integer equal to one you know it must have satisfied whatever if statement you're using so you could say you know a real life example would be to check a temperature sensor and if the temperature sensor had 42 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius doesn't matter then exit the code and play some silly animation on the computer right using or on a screen or flash some lights or make a sound or something so you could say some integer equals to one when you could set some integer equal to one when the t temperature sensor is reading 42 or you could say if it hasn't read 42 within 10 minutes so you can say delay um, you say you want to check the temperature sensor every second you can say delay 1000 as your last line in the for loop as in right right there before before the end of the for loop because right here this is your end of the for loop right you could set delay 1000 have your code that checks the temperature sensor and you know that if it hasn't been sensed in whatever this number is you could make this number so that it would be uh, the delay 1000 times this number would be equal to uh, you know a minute or however long you wanted it to go on for then it would exit the code once the time got over your set amount of time and you would know that since some integer is equal to zero it must have timed out and you could make it display a sad face or something like that I don't know that's just how I would use it so you know a for loop will just to sum the for loop up I know I've been talking for a long time but for loop will only do the loop if the value if the integer whatever this is is set equal to the number you have it here at when the for loop is happening otherwise it'll skip it then it's going to count up or down depending on this line of code and it's going to count up or down until it's less than or greater than this number that you make it here and it'll it'll do that for loop one less than this time so since this number is less than 11 it'll do it 10 because 10 is the highest integer that is less than 11 remember integers only like 11 12 not 11 and a half that's not an integer so since 10 is the highest integer that's less than 11 it's loop 10 times and then exit you can also use this break code if you spell it right to exit the for loop whenever you want so that's for loops thanks for watching